If you are a fan of my content, be sure to like it, share it, and subscribe to the channel. It's the only way it can grow. Thank you. In the early 1980s, long before clowns were making a soil or collective underpants, an arcade game was released that merged together the likes of clowns, monsters, and farming? Who would have thought that those three components merged together just perfectly would create an arcade classic? The name of the game is Mr. Do or Misuda Dua as it's known in Japan. Who is the snowman and how does he factor into our game? How does a toilet factor into the overall game's design? So put on a brave face because the clowns are coming. This is the history of Mr. Do. The year is 1982 and game designer Kazutoshi Ueda is looking for ideas for his next arcade game. The very first game he had designed was the arcade hit Ladybug, which was released in 1981, and his bosses at Universal wanted a follow-up that would be comparable in sales. He had attended the Amusement and Music Operator Association show in Chicago, and on the flight back, the president of Universal was inquiring about the development of his next game. The president had only one request, make his upcoming game similar to the massive arcade hit Dig Dug. Mr. Ueda had laid out the basic plot with a main character digging in the ground similar to Dig Dug. Instead of just killing monsters, he decided to add cherries that would have to be farmed or collected. The main character of the game was initially not a clown. People often referred to him as a snowman, but he is clearly wearing a sheet over his body and holding a rake. You can even see remains of the original design on certain bezels of the North American version. Instead of a pump gun found in Dig Dug, he wanted something different but didn't know exactly what that would be. On one particular day, Mr. Ueda went to the bathroom on his break and while sitting on his porcelain throne, he happened to look out the window and there it was. A Super Bowl was lodged in the rain gutter on the building next door. This was the inspiration for the Powerball found in Mr. Do. This was one of the first conversion kits offered from Taito. For a few hundred dollars, you could upgrade your existing cabinet and change it to something completely different as opposed to spending thousands of dollars on a brand new one. Mr. Do was released in 1982 by Universal. Depending on which version you're playing, you're either in control of a farmer or a clown as you attempt to collect all the cherries while avoiding the monsters. You can move Mr. Do up, down, left or right as he digs through the ground in search of cherries. Your primary attack is your bouncy ball which will immediately kill any enemy it comes in contact with. Although it's very powerful, you can only use it once every few seconds. If the ball happens to miss the enemy, you'll have to wait until it bounces back to you before you can use it again. All of the cherries are grouped together in packs of eight. If you collect all eight cherries in a row without stopping, you'll receive a point bonus. The monsters on the board will follow you like an SPD fart in an elevator. You can use either the bouncy ball to take them out or lure them under the golden apples. Similar to Dig Dug's rock mechanic, you can dig a tunnel, luring them under the golden apples where if timed just right, the apple will fall and crush them. Be careful though, because if the apple falls on you, then Mr. Do becomes Mr. Dead. Unlike the rocks in Dig Dug, you can push the rocks into position. There is a feature in the game that allows you to collect letters and attempt to spell out the word extra. This is the only way you can accumulate an extra life in Mr. Do. Mr. Ueda grew up playing pinball and wanted to incorporate something from his love of the pin into this game. He remembered fondly having to spell out the words in the various pinball machines of his youth, so he decided to add this as a tribute. Once you spell out the word extra, you will receive an extra Mr. Do in a nice little cutscene while the theme from Astro Boy is played. Food items also appear on every board similar to Pac-Man including sandwiches, milk jugs, hamburgers, jello, and chocolate. There are 12 different food items in total. Once you collect the food item, 
the blue munchers come out and chase you around the board. Now they are faster than you, so you have to be on your toes to avoid them. Once all the cherries are collected, all the enemies are killed, extra is spelled out, or a diamond is found, then the board is cleared and you move on to the next. Speaking of the diamond, it is extremely rare and is hidden inside of golden apples. If you are lucky enough to grab the diamond, not only will the level clear, but you will also be awarded a free game. Again, similar to being awarded a free game in pinball. In early versions of the game, when Mr. Dude dies, his head inflates to about five times his normal size and pops. Perhaps they felt this was too similar to Dig Dug, so they changed it. After every three screens, there is a brief intermission which shows the times you completed the previous three levels in. In the first revision of the arcade game, there is a glitch that will give you 255 lives. I will leave a link in the description below with a video explaining how to do this. Mr. Do was a massive hit and just about every popular platform got a home conversion. Datasoft was in charge of the home PC ports while Coleco handled the home console versions. Let's start this off with the Atari 2600 version. For a game running on 1977 technology, this isn't too bad aside from the blue grass that is. Not as many cherries on screen or golden apples, but what's there looks pretty good. The music and sound effects are very good along with the controls. They are nice and tight the way they should be. Up next is the Apple II version. Once again, we have an epidemic of bluegrass, and for some reason the golden apples look like golden tomatoes. Everything else looks really good, but the sound effects... Now I've joked before about games sounding like flatulence, but seriously, listen to the apple fall and break and tell me what you think. It sounds like one of those short, squat, diarrhea farts. Anyway, the game controls good and that's all that matters. The MSX version starts out very well with a nice representation of the arcade game including green grass. The sprites are fairly large and detailed except the monsters look like radioactive baby chicks out for revenge. However, the opening song which should last just a few seconds plays the entire time. It's beyond annoying especially if you're a fan of the arcade game. The controls are a bit too stiff in my opinion and the speed of the game is just a bit too slow. The ColecoVision port is the one I had growing up as a kid and it's a pretty good conversion. Looking very similar to the MSX release but with faster gameplay. The sound effects and music are well done and the controls feel just like the arcade game. Up next is the Atari XE version. They did a really good job of representing the arcade game. The sprites are nice and detailed, although the cherries seem a bit squished. The colors seem a bit drab as well. The speed of the game is very close to the arcade original, but the music could have been done better. The controls feel like the arcade game, which is always a good thing. Up next is the good old Commodore 64 version. The graphics are nice and colorful with detailed sprites. This is one of the few home versions that featured all of the cutscenes from the arcade game. Sound effects and music are spot on with good renditions of the original. The gameplay is nice and fast making this one of the best 8-bit conversions on the market. The original Game Boy even got a version of Mr. Do and it's really well done. The graphics have been modified due to the lack of color but the compromises in no way hurt the gameplay. Everything stands out and is easily visible. Some of the music has been changed which is a bit of a downer but the gameplay is nice and fast. Well done. Up next we have the Super Nintendo version. It's a bit odd that we never received an NES version but we did receive one for the 16-bit console. This is a very close conversion but also includes some extra options including a battle mode where two Mr. Do's can take on each other. This mode is very fun to play, so if you ever get a chance to try it, make sure you do. The graphics and animation are nice and smooth along with excellent sound effects and music. The speed of the game is perfect along with the gameplay. And finally, we have the X68000 version. As you would expect, this is a darn near perfect replica of the arcade game. 
The sound effects and music are identical and the graphics are very close if not arcade perfect. The controls are great, so chalk up another excellent conversion for this home computer. In 1983, Mr. Dew's Castle was released in the arcades. Instead of digging holes, you are in a castle collecting cherries and killing unicorn-like monsters. You have both movable and non-movable ladders to help you avoid your enemies. You can use your hammer to knock blocks out and set traps. You can also spell the word extra for an extra Mr. Do. Now some people claim this game is better than the first one, but personally I still prefer the original. It was a pretty big hit, but nowhere near as popular as the first one. In 1984, Mr. Do's Wild Ride was released. This time, you're on a giant roller coaster collecting cherries as you try to reach the top. You have to avoid the roller coaster cars by climbing up the ladders. This time, the game is timed, so you have to be quick. This did not sell very well, but it was not the last game in the Mr. Do franchise. In late 1984, Do Run Run was released. This time you have your Powerball back, which is used to defeat the monsters. In this game, you have to pick up dots that are lying along the playfield while leaving a line behind. You have to close off each section of the playfield with your line similar to the arcade game Kicks. This sold even less than Mr. Do's Wild Ride. In 1995, a full 13 years after the original game was released, Neo Mr. Do came out. This was released by Visco for the Neo Geo MVS system. The gameplay is very similar to the original, only with much better graphics and sound. It was never ported to any other home system. And that about covers the history of Mr. Do. Whether he's a snowman, a farmer, or even an insane clown, chances are you'll have a fun time playing whichever version it is. So if you never had the chance to play Mr. Do, give it a shot. You'll be glad you did. If you would like to support me on Patreon, please do so by clicking the link below. Also, be sure to like, share, and subscribe to my content. A big thumbs up always helps. Thanks for watching.